Connect to Rheumatology. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz. If you're new here, welcome. Here at Connect to Rheumatology, we talk about all things rheumatology, immunology, diet and movement, and mental health and wellness because we believe it's all connected. Today we are tackling a doozy, something that can be a little challenging to wrap your head around, but if you can get it, it's super beneficial for really everyone with an autoimmune condition, and that is the concept of overlap syndromes. So if you know what this term is and have struggled with it, then this is definitely for you, but even if you're not quite sure what I'm talking about, I think there's some good nuggets in here that will help you reframe the way you think about your own autoimmune condition. So let's just get to it. Okay, so we're talking about overlap syndromes, and by the way, I forgot to say this on up front, if you are new here and you like this kind of information, please make sure you subscribe, like this video, share it with anyone you think might benefit from it, it really helps us out. And one quick plug for my new free, free online course titled The Productive Rheumatology Appointment Guide. It's a course really aimed at helping you understand and reframe your symptoms, your diagnosis, your treatments, and how to get the most out of these short rheumatology appointments. I know firsthand how challenging it can be for someone who's like never had to see the doctor and then all of a sudden you've got 20 million appointments and a pharmacy load of medicines and it can be very overwhelming. And so this guide was put together to help kind of lessen the learning curve that I know everyone gets on when they get a new diagnosis. So check that out. The link is in the description box and I really hope it helps. Okay, overlap syndromes. What are they? <laughs> so the use of the term overlap syndrome is a little fluid in that different providers might use it in different ways. So you might find someone using the term to describe an individual who actually has two conditions. So for example, someone with lupus and Hashimoto's thyroiditis, or someone with inflammatory bowel disease and psoriasis. You might find a provider use the term overlap. Most rheumatologists will not use the term in those settings. The way rheumatologists will use the term is to describe an individual who actually doesn't meet criteria for any particular condition, but has multiple features of multiple different conditions. So they might have a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but yet they don't quite meet the criteria for any one of those conditions, and so we will label them as an overlap syndrome. When I talk about the idea that someone might have certain features of one condition combined with features of another condition. What exactly am I talking about? Like, what are these features? And to help me describe this, I'm going to use the example of rupus. Yes, yes, you heard that right. Rupus, R-H-U-P-U-S. So as you might have gathered, it's a rare but well-recognized overlap syndrome between rheumatoid arthritis and lupus. Okay, so how do we get to a diagnosis of rupus? Well, let's first think about how we make a diagnosis of either one of these conditions. So, with rheumatoid arthritis, you have people who have inflammation of the small joints of the hands and also feet and other places, but to keep it simple, we're gonna talk about the hands. They get morning stiffness, they have a positive rheumatoid factor and probably a positive CCP. And if you don't know what those are, then I'll put links in the description box to videos where I talk about those antibodies. Rheumatoid arthritis patients can also have a positive ANA. And on x-rays, they can oftentimes have what we call erosions in the joints, meaning that the joint architecture has been changed a little bit. So that's rheumatoid arthritis. Now let's talk about lupus. Well, you can also get small joint inflammation of the hands. You also get morning stiffness. You can also have an ANA. You can also have a rheumatoid factor. You don't typically get a CCP. You don't get erosions on your x-ray. And then obviously you have a whole slew of other things that can happen. Kidney problems, heart and lung problems, rashes, ulcers in the mouth. All of those things you really don't see with rheumatoid arthritis. So, in someone with an overlap syndrome or who has rupus, 
you would expect someone to have features of both. So for example, they might have inflammatory arthritis of the small joints. They might have a positive rheumatoid factor, a positive ANA, and a positive CCP. They might have erosions on an x-ray. Oh, and they also have rashes. Oh, and then they might also have kidney issues, like in lupus. So you can see how they have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And so we call it an overlap syndrome. And in this particular case, brilliant rheumatologists have decided to call it rupus. <laughs> now, there are a number of other kind of commonly seen overlap syndromes. You can have rheumatoid arthritis and myositis. You can have lupus with vas... Well, you have lupus with myositis. You can have rheumatoid arthritis with vasculitis. And then, of course, there's like the OG overlap syndrome, which is mixed connective tissue disorder, which I have a whole video on, um, and I'll put that in the description box below. And that's an overlap syndrome that was kind of become its own thing because of a particular autoantibody, the anti-RNP, that seems to be very specific for people with that particular overlap. Okay, so do we know how to treat these overlap syndromes? Well, you know, these syndromes can be very frustrating for a number of reasons, but the biggest thing is we all just want to have a diagnosis. We all just want to know exactly what I've got, and really I'm not talking just about patients. Doctors also can be very uncomfortable whenever someone has a little bit of this and a little bit of that. You know, everyone wants to have that firm diagnosis. In rheumatology, though, sometimes that just doesn't happen. And so most rheumatologists are actually very comfortable with overlaps and this, this gray amorphous area that sometimes we have to live in where we don't have a firm diagnosis. But that doesn't mean we don't know how to treat it. And the reason we're able to treat overlap syndrome is because we focus on the features. So here's a little insight into how your rheumatologist thinks or should think. <laughs> So in our minds, we have this bucket of medications at our disposal, and we have a bucket of autoimmune features. Now, in some cases where someone is very clearly whatever, they, their diagnosis is very clear, we have algorithms and we have studies and we have data that shows us what treatments are best for that condition. But really, the reason that, that we have that data is based on how we're treating the features of that particular condition. So even though your doctor might not actually be explaining it to you, if you have lupus, for example, the reason they might recommend a certain treatment to you is because in their mind, they have divided up your condition into its features and we know which medications are best suited for those features. So in that same way, we're able to treat overlap syndromes by just dividing it up into the individual features and finding the right treatment based on that. So you can see with this framework, it actually doesn't matter what we call a particular condition because really we aim our treatment at the features and really this is how we individualize people's treatment plan. This is how we provide personalized care. Now, this is really kind of upper level rheumatology stuff. And I spent a lot of time teaching young doctors and students and young rheumatologists. And this concept is something that, you know, takes some time to wrap your head around. So don't be, don't beat yourself up if you're, if you are a little confused or your mind's a little blown right now. Now, unfortunately in our current medical system, reimbursement to support hospitals and clinics and doctors and staff and all of that is reliant on coding and coding doesn't necessarily fit well with this kind of loosey-goosey idea of well let's just focus on the features type of approach and so we oftentimes are kind of cornered into picking the best diagnosis even if it doesn't a hundred percent represent what an, any individual is actually going through. So for this reason, having open, honest communication with your doctor is key in understanding the way they think about your condition and how they're making decisions on the medications that they're recommending. And those kinds of nuance are just not captured in a list of diagnoses that you might be provided by the electronic health chart. 
So one key point I wanted to make is overlap syndrome the same as undifferentiated connective tissue disorder. No, but they both are kind of loosey-goosey in this gray area. So UCTD, or undifferentiated connective tissue disease, is a diagnosis given when, again, someone doesn't quite fit criteria for any one condition, but yet clearly has some autoimmune features. Oftentimes, UCTD is a diagnosis given to someone early on in their autoimmune journey, meaning they haven't quite blossomed or developed into the autoimmune condition that they're going to have. And so maybe they have some positive blood work, they have some features of autoimmunity, but they don't quite fit lupus, or they don't quite fit rheumatoid arthritis. So they might be given a diagnosis of UCTD. Now, most people will eventually show themselves to be a particular diagnosis. And so it's not uncommon for someone to initially have a diagnosis of UCTD, and then months to years later, it becomes a little more clear that they might have for example, Sjogren's or lupus or, or, or whatever. Now, I know that not everyone is going to end up needing to have conversations with their rheumatologist about an overlap syndrome, but I think the way we think about this condition and the way we break it up into features in order to know how best to treat it is really applicable to every autoimmune condition. And in an effort to better understand your own condition, understand your own flavor of your autoimmune condition, I think it's worthwhile to think about this idea of splitting it up into features. I often say that no patient is the same. Learning about your features, your symptoms, your labs, your triggers, all of that is key in understanding how best to take care of yourself with this autoimmune condition. Now, knowing common symptoms and common labs is an excellent first step, but there is no video or blog or article that's really going to give you all the answers when it comes to your particular situation. But paying attention to your features and your own condition will help you not only take care of yourself, but help you become a better participant in your own care as you work with your doctor. So I hope there's been some nuggets of information in here. It's kind of an odd topic. Not everyone comes across this, this term or this idea in their autoimmune journey, but if you happen to have come across it or are curious about it, I hope I've given you a little bit of insight. And if not, I hope I've just opened your eyes to maybe how to think about your own autoimmune condition. As always, if you like this, please hit like, subscribe, share it with anyone you might think could need it. And here at Rheumatology, nope, here at Connected Rheumatology, we talk about all things rheumatology, immunology, diet and movement, and mental health and wellness because we believe, what? It's all connected. Thanks and have a great day.